Okay, so this is just a tutorial on how to actually go about answering uh, the series of questions that we've got in this Excel document. As you can see down here, there's a series of pages here. Each of them has its similar sort of layout to what I've got in this example. And each one of these pages will have a question at the top left here that we're going to answer and do a series of things for. You can see here that, um, let's just read the question. So the question says that I've already baked 12 sausage rolls. If I bake two more every minute, how many will I have after six minutes and after one hour? Uh, one hour? There's also another couple of questions down here. And how long will it take to make 102 sausage rolls? And how long will it take to make 46 sausage rolls in total? Now, to answer these, what we're actually going to do is we're going to create a table of values and graph it and see what kind of trend there is and use that trend to be able to answer these questions a little bit quicker. So, what we're going to do down here is we've got this table of values just in here. And what this is saying is, how many sausage rolls will I have after zero minutes? This should actually have some units in here. So I'm going to add some units. But how many sausage rolls will I have after zero minutes? Well, I already had 12 sausage rolls to begin this question. So the answer to that is, I'll have 12 sausage rolls. So I'm just going to type in 12 in here. And the next question is saying, well, how many am I going to have after one minute? Well, you can see here that I had 12 to begin with, and I bake two more every minute. So I'm going to have my 12 that I started with, plus another two. But rather than just typing 14 in, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use one of Excel's key features, and that's what we call uh, formulas. So if you hit the equal sign to begin with, what you're actually telling Excel is you're telling it to follow a set of instructions. And the set of instructions I want it to do is I want it to take whatever numbers in this cell. So if I click this cell, it just references that cell, F9. It's going to take whatever numbers in here. And what I want to do to it is I want to add two to it because I'm going to bake two more every minute. So if I hit enter now, you can see here it comes up with the 14 like I was expecting. Now you might be sitting here going, well, that took longer than just typing 14 in. Why might you want to do that? Well, the neat thing with Excel is if I click this cell now, and you can see my formula up here, it's just written up in here, and I go to the bottom right corner of the square, and I click it, so you've got this little black arrow uh, cross sort of thing, and I click and drag it across now. What it's actually going to do is it's going to copy that same formula right across. So that same set of instructions right across. It's going to take whatever number was in the previous cell and add 2 to it. Now if I go back to the original cell and I change this number, let's say I change it to 2, what will happen is all these cells will change at once. So look at that. All of them are just 2 bigger than the cell previously. If I change to 7, all of them change as well. That's the advantage. It's a huge powerful tool that Excel actually has. So let's change this back to 12. And now what I've got is a table of values uh, that shows how many sausage rolls I'll have between 0 and 7 minutes. So what I want to do from here is I want to create a graph of this. So if I click just in the open cell here and drag to highlight all my table of values, what I can now do is I can go to uh, its insert. And in here is I'll have this little scatter plot type graph. It's called XY scatter. If you click that and then click just the top left one, the scatter one, it will create you a graph that we can see here of our different values. But this graph at the moment is unlabeled. So as I said you know, in our previous lesson, that labeling our graphs are really, really important. We need to have the x-axis labeled, the y-axis labeled. Giving a title is also handy. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to change a few things here. I'm going to start with the title. Now, because I'm used to creating um, creating investigations and things like that, if you're ever going to include graphs in your investigation, you should be calling them figure one, figure two, figure three, and then actually a title of it. So, um, number of sausage rolls, we'll call it. Rolls baked. There we go. There's a title for it. But what we can now do is we can click the graph itself and we can start adding chart elements over here. And what I want to do is I want to add some axes titles. So if I go with the primary horizontal title first, this now allows me to change what this is being represented by. And if you look at this, it's from 0 to 8. So this 0 
to 7 sort of here. It's representing our time. Our time here is our independent variable. So what I need to do here is I need to put our time and our units down in here. And then I need to repeat by going to add chart element axis titles, but the same thing with the horizontal title. So the horizontal title is the number of sausage rolls that I have at that point in time. So number of sausage rolls, like that. And now you can see here is I've got a fully labeled graph and fully, you know, it's got title and everything that represents this information. What I now want to do though is each one of these, you can see here that I've got this linear line that's occurring, and each linear line does have a rule that we can use to very quickly answer questions. That's the advantage of having a relationship or a correlation, as we call it, between two variables, is there's generally a rule that we can use and be able to make calculations really, really quickly. So how do we get that rule? Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to click this little uh, data point, any one of them, doesn't matter which, and then I want to right click it, and what I want to do is I want to add a trend line to it. And what that will do is it will automatically guess, so you can see here on the right here, it's guessed that it's a linear line. Fantastic. That's what I wanted. If it wasn't, you can like try adding different things. We're not going to be dealing with these others at the moment. Um, so don't try adding those others uh, to it. Just leave it as linear because all these at the moment are going to be linear relationships. But what I want to do is I want to find, okay, I've worked out it's a linear relationship. I'm displaying its line of best fit, I want to find a rule for it, also known as an equation for it. So if I go to this little checkbox here, display equation on chart, you can now see just in here it's displayed a little equation in terms of y and x. And that's what we're going to just type in here. So our equation that's found is y equals 2x plus 12, which is saying that in order to find my y variable, this is just an set of instructions, in order to find my y variable, what I need to do is I need to first multiply my x variable by 2 and then I need to add 12. That's the set of instructions it's doing. Now, we could leave this in terms of y and x, that's fine, but we can actually represent these two variables in any letter that we want. So we can actually change this to be letters that make sort of sense to this situation if we want it. So, you know, our y variable right now is our sausage rolls, a number of sausage rolls. So I might say that I might call that S, okay, just to make it easier for the problem. And I might make this X variable, this X variable of time, equal T. So I might say S equals 2T plus 12, something like that. Um, but if I'm going to change, like, well, if I'm going to represent variables, even if it's X and Y, what I do need to do is say what each one of these actually represent. So S is the number of sausage rolls and T is time and then include the units. So what you can see here is this is what I call defining the variables. I've defined what does S actually represent in this set of instructions and what does T represent in this set of instructions. The set of instructions being the equation or the rule for this. Now the neat thing about having this rule is if I need to find the number of sausage rolls, I can now find it really, really quickly. What this is telling me is I need to do two times whatever the amount of time I've got, and then add 12. So if you look back at my table of values, if I put zero into this, zero for time, this would be two times zero, which is zero, then add 12, which is what we got. If I pick four, for example, so it'd be two times four, which is eight, and then add 12, which is 20. So this set of instructions seems to work here. Now, for six minutes, I'm going to do the same sort of thing. My S is going to equal two times. Now, if you're going to do times in the computer, if you press the shift key and press number eight, you get this little asterisk sort of symbol there. That's computer language for multiply. So I'm going to be doing two times my time. My time was six minutes here. And then add 12. And what this is just showing is what I'm about to do up here to get the answer. Now, if I want the computer to do the answer for me, I actually start with an equal sign. And I go, this is going to be 2 multiplied by my 6 and then add my 12. So this is now telling the computer to do 2 times 6 and then add 12 for me. If I press enter now, there we go, it's 24, which in our table of values we already had, so we already knew that. 
Now, what about one hour? Well, one hour is 60 minutes. So I'd have to keep extending this through to 60 minutes. But the rule allows me to do this really quickly. So if I do s equals, oops, is that where I want to do it? Yep. So s equals, what I'd be doing here is 2 times the number of minutes I've got. So it's 60 in this case. So 2 times 60. And then I want to add my 12 at the end. So, of course, I want to do this as a formula here. So you start with an equal sign. This would be 2 times 60. And then add my 12 at the end here. And you can now see that I would have 132 sausage rolls after one hour. All right. So that's the top section sort of done. And you can see here what I'd be expecting to see is the working out each time. Um, and if I click on these cells, I should be able to see a formula here. That's what I'm expecting you to complete. If I click on these cells, I'm also expecting to see a formula. This first one, I'm just expecting to see a number because that's you need the number for a starting point so you can get your formulas happening. I also expect you to define the variables. You can change the variables to letters that make sense to you. That's perfectly fine. Or you can leave them as Y and X. That's fine as well. But I do need you to tell me what Y is, what X is. In this case, for me, is what uh, S is, I might actually change that to an is, um, and what uh, T is in my actual rule itself. So what about these questions down here? Well these questions down here is saying I want to know how many sausage rolls I'll have, uh, sorry, how long it will take to get 102 sausage rolls. So the variable that I've got here is my S variable. So if I substitute S or replace S in this rule, what ends up happening here is I'll have 102, because that's what my S is, is equal to 2t plus 12. That's what my rule said. So 102 equals 2t plus 12. But I want to find out how long it is. I want to find out what the t would be here. And this is where solving equations comes, into hand, uh, comes in handy. What I want to do here is I want to solve my unknown now, solve my t. So how do I do it? Well, I work backwards. I'm using that same depth. So the first thing I need to do is I need to subtract 12 from both sides. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write that here. So I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. And when I do that, 102 subtract 12 will be 90, and that will equal 2t because the 12 will cancel on this side. But this is 2 multiplied by t. So the opposite of multiplying is to divide. So what I need to do is divide uh, 2... Uh, to both sides. Oh, divide both sides by 2 is probably the better way to say that. And when I divide this by 2, that'll be 45, the left hand side, and then divide the right hand side by 2 will be t. So I'm expecting t to be 45 minutes. Now, if you think about this, what I actually started with on the left hand side was 102. So we'll just say t equals. So I started with 102, and the first thing I did was I subtracted 12 from it. So I subtracted 12 from it. And I'm going to put this in brackets. Now, if you do need to edit afterwards, click up in here. That's where you edit, just up the top. Uh, and then I need to divide by 2. Now, the computer language for divide is similar to what we do. is that fraction sign or that um, uh, backslash that you've got here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first subtract 12 from it, and then I'm going to divide by 2, and that should get me my answer straight away. So now I'm going to put it as a formula, a set of instructions. So what I want the computer to do is I need to do it subtraction first, and computers do no bed mass. I first need to go 102, take 12. All right? Then I need to divide by 2, and that should get me my answer. So you can see here it would take me 45 minutes to make 102 sausage rolls. Alright, so last one, 46 sausage rolls. Well, we're going to do the same sort of thing. So for the 46 sausage rolls, we're going to start with 102. That's equal, uh, not 102, sorry, 46, because that's our S now. So S is now 46. And that's equal to 2T plus 12. That's what our rule or our formula said. Now, the first thing I need to do to solve it is going to be to subtract 12 from both sides. When I do that, 46 take 12 will be uh, 34, and that'll be equal to um, 
2t. And then I need to divide both sides by 2. So divide both sides by 2. And 34 divided by 2 would be 17, so our t I'm anticipating to be 17. Now, instead of instructions, you can see here are actually identical again. So we're going to first subtract 12 from both sides, and we're going to divide by 2. So to do our t, that's going to be equal to our starting value of 46, so the 46 that we need. But I first need to, so I'm going to put in brackets, I first need to subtract 12 from both sides. And then I need to divide by 2. So that's the set of instructions that I'm going to write in here. So I click on this cell, that big yellow one, just here. Type equals sign to say, hey, I want you to follow this, this set of rules. So I want you to first do 46 take 12. So I'm going to put that in brackets. And then I want you to divide by 2. And you can see here that it's done it really quickly for you. And it's found how long it's going to take, which is 17 or 17 minutes. So, expectations. When I actually look at this, what I'm looking for is the set of working out like I've got here, display. I'm looking at what instructions are you going to input and tell the formula to do, just under here. And I'm looking for the formula itself when I click on these cells. If I click on the cell, I should see the formula here, not just a number. Alright, oops, don't do that because otherwise you'll mess it up. Um, so if you click on this cell, for example, I can see just a number. Up in here, I'm expecting to see a number in the first one, but then a formula from each other one. Up in here, I'm expecting to see formulas with your set of instructions that you're going to input underneath. And then here, I'm expecting to see a rule with your um, variables clearly defined. And the last thing I'm expecting to see with each page is a graph, with the axes labelled, with an appropriate title, preferably with figure one, figure two, figure three, get in the habit, all right, with a line of best fit and a rule for that line of best fit, all right, so that's what I'm expecting to see for each one of these uh, with yours.